In a viral video, one West Robinson was seen narrating how she was rescued but allegedly neglected at the Maitama General Hospital, Abuja, for not providing a police report. Robinson said the victim was severely injured after robbers threw her out of the vehicle along the Maitama Kuba Expressway. He narrated in the video with the victim lying on the floor that he and some bystanders had rushed her to the hospital where she died after being denied treatment. Good evening, it's your brother Wes Robinson reporting live. This lady was just pushed down from a vehicle between Maitama and Kuba Expressway. Unfortunately, the nurses and the medical doctors that were on duty at the Maitama General Hospital when this woman was brought in refused that this girl should be taken inside. This is what we have been saying. For them to attend to her, they are saying their procedures and they just shut the gate against us and she died. This is what is happening here in Maitama General Hospital. He made this known. Nigerians on X, formerly Twitter, have now taken to the platform to call out the hospital. Here are some comments. Writing via at Ademola 815282. When Ademola said, That was how they almost wasted my life in the year 2020, June 22, to be precise, when I had a car accident in which I sustained a spinal cord injury after administering first aid treatment. They discharged me without finding out if I am okay. At Tommy Wababalola, they swore to save lives, but they end up contributing to untimely deaths. The tale of Nigerian hospitals and their staff. At Gloria Ogu 3, why is Nigerian wicked? Why Nigeria hospital and armed forces wicked? At Dikpo, speak, wrote, can't fathom where the humanity is right now. How wicked and heartless can people be? How do people sleep at night knowing a life was lost due to outright wickedness or negligence? At Maybex wrote, Hospitals have to be accounted for such negligence, otherwise this event will continue to happen. The hospital is yet to react to the development calls pulled through to a line found on its website went unanswered. Meanwhile, the Yali Network says it will leave no stone unturned as it seeks justice for its member and other Nigerians who have lost their lives in the hands of criminals. The coordinator of Yali Network Abuja, Ms. Miyosuri Oladayo, while condoling the family, described Oloran Femi as a dedicated and committed member of the network. Oladayo said, The unfortunate event that led to the greatness now. Oladayo said, The unfortunate event that led to greatness death is a testament to the rising insecurity in Abuja. An investigation should be launched to ensure that those responsible are brought to book. We also got some damning reports of ejection and abandonment from the emergency section of the Maitama General Hospital. We are currently engaging with the Nigerian police to investigate the matter, even as we feel Maitama General Hospital can survey the National Health Act that was passed in 2014. The law states that a health care provider, health worker, or health establishment shall not refuse a person emergency medical treatment for any reason and anyone that goes against the law is liable for a fine of 100,000 naira, a jail term of six months or both upon conviction. Also, the National Assembly in July 2017 passed the compulsory treatment and care of victims of gunshot bills aimed at ensuring that victims of gunshot wounds receive treatment from medical workers an assistant from security agencies. Kiki Okeri, co-passenger of Greatness Alarm Femi, who died from the injuries sustained from the attack by one chance operators in Abuja last week, has given a vivid account of the attack. Miss Alarm Femi, a community developer, died at the Maitama General Hospital in the federal capital, where she was rushed to after the attack along the Katampe Kumbwa Road. She was reportedly thrown out of a fast-moving vehicle by her attackers on 26 September while on her way from work. Ms. Okere, a journalist, said they were both beaten up by members of the syndicate who demanded their ATM cards and mobile phones shortly after they boarded the vehicle. She narrated at a press conference convened by Young African Leaders Initiative, of which Ms. Olorofemi was a member, that when they got close to the bridge, Lincoln Maitama and Katampe, one of the operators, moved and sat down between the two women. 
She said one of the operators, a male, opened the door after moving around the town and pushed Miss Olorunfemi. As she was trying to get her balance, she fell from the vehicle. Miss Okere's father said after Miss Olorunfemi fell and was lying on the ground, the one chance operator still ran over her with the car. She said on that fateful day, I closed from work around 5 p.m. and it was raining. I had to enter a total filling station. After that, everybody started looking for a vehicle to get to their destination. Getting to NNPC Toa, the bridge is where we normally get a vehicle to Kubwa. There was no vehicle on the ground. It was just Dutse. Then a vehicle came calling Kubwa. Already, there was somebody inside. There was a guy in front and one at the back. Because the rain was still threatening to come down, we just entered the vehicle. Immediately, the vehicle moved and getting to the Marshalashi Moss Junction, Greatness now noticed that the door was not locked properly. She was now telling the driver to stop the vehicle so that she could lock the door. Because I entered before her and she was sitting beside me. Immediately, she turned. She noticed that the handle wasn't there. The thing caught my attention. By the time we turned to face the driver, the glasses were already wound up and they were tinted glasses. The guy in front just pushed his chair backward and brought out a long gun, while the one beside me brought out the shotgun. Immediately she turned, she noticed that the handle was gone, and that was when the thing caught my attention. And I looked at the thing. By the time we were turning back to face the driver, the glass were already wind up. It was a tinted glass. The one in the front, the guy in the front just pushed his chair back and brought out the long gun. The one beside me brought out the shotgun on my head. They started beating two of us, started hitting us, immediately collected my bag. They collected our bag, collected our phones, collected my phone. Then they searched my bag because immediately I noticed that the glass was wind up. It sensed in my spirit that, yes, it all sets. So I just calmed down. The one beside me said, I suspect this woman, she be police, she be police, she be military person. When they searched my bag, because I'm a journalist, I cover defense, I cover police. And when you cover these bits, they give you their ID card for access. So immediately you saw that card inside my bag. That was another round, another set of beating for me. Then I started searching my body to know if there is a tracker of me or there is a hidden gun somewhere. Did I search in me? Meanwhile, greatness was crying, pleading for help. They were just hitting her. The one in the front, that one doesn't even have any pity at all. Was just hitting her, beating two of us together. Then, it was an ATM the first collected. No, they collected the two ATM and said, because they collected my bag, collected her bag too. They now brought her an ATM and asked her to pay for the ATM. She, I told them the pain, they asked me to. I told them the pain, say if you get like that, we'll just blow off your head here and stuff like that. We complied to whatever thing they were telling us in the car. Then I don't know if there's no money in our account. I don't know what really happened. They are saying, nobody you will define, nobody you will define. Yeah, nobody you will define. So getting, we're just moving around the town. Looking for more fame. And looking for more victims, sorry. Then getting to that Maitama bridge, linking to Secretariat, as if we are going, that bridge that linked together, as if we are going to also drive to Kubwa. They now slow down a bit, now open the door, because the guy beside me now moved in between me and the greatness. I never knew what I wanted to do, because I don't even know what to say at that particular period. I thought he just wanted to get access to two of us, maybe the battery was together. I never knew that he wanted to open the door for her to get out. He made the car just, the car, the car was still in motion. He just opened the door, just pushed her, get out, get out, get out. So she was trying to hold the door so that she could get her balance for her to be able to stand well. They just, the guy just used the door to hit her. Used the door to hit her. Get out, leave this place, get out. You know, Immediately she fell on the floor. Well now, stand up now, stand up now. Before you know it, they just ran over the girl. Um.
The car was still in motion. He just pushed down, telling her to get out. So she was trying to hold the door so that she could get her balance to be able to stand down. The guy used the door to hit her and said, get out, leave this place. Immediately she fell on the floor. He now told her to stand up now, stand up now. Before you know it, they just ran over the girl and moved. Immediately I shouted and they started hitting me. She explained that the treatment the operators gave to Miss Olorunfemi was somewhat different from hers because they could not find money in the deceased account when they went to the ATM. Meanwhile, Yali has frowned at the attitude of the management of Maitama General Hospital towards the investigation into the death of their member. It said the hospital has yet to respond to the invitation by the Federal Capital Territory Police Command Abuja. Ms. Lauren Femi was allegedly abandoned at the emergency unit of the hospital, where she was rushed to. According to viral videos and audio recordings, the staff on duty allegedly demanded a police report before they could render any care, service to her, thus leading to her untimely demise. Yali Network Coordinator Muyo Soluwa Oladayo said the organization was at the police headquarters Mabushi at early as 8.30 a.m. on 2nd October to support the police in this case, but discovered that the hospital management had yet to respond to the invitation by the force. We found out that the management of Maitama General Hospital had not responded to police summons. No statement was written by them. Instead, we heard that they said an investigative panel was created and that the FCT minister is the head of the team. I'm sure it is all over the news now. We work closely with the police to ensure that the case was transferred to SCID FCT Command the same day. Yali Network wrote a statement at the SCID FCT Command alongside the representative of the deceased family. Then, the CID officer said we should come the next day to go to Maitama General Hospital. In his words, if Mountain no come to Mohammed, Mohammed will go to Mountain. We believe no one is above the law and we are calling out to Maitama General Hospital to respect the law and respond to the calls made by the Nigerian police force. Ms. Oladaya said the organization wants the collaboration of the FCT administration and the FCT police command in unraveling the death of Ms. Oloron Femi at the hospital as well as the arrest of the syndicate. She also called, among other things, for thorough and independent investigation regarding greatness, death, and a thorough and independent investigation into the allegation against Maitama General Hospital. Ms. Oladaya said Nigeria must be salvaged by Nigerians despite the decadence within the society. She said the organization has the technical know-how to solve the perennial problems bedeviling the country. She stated, as a network building young leaders, we are sure that Nigeria will be fixed by Nigerians. We are convinced that we have the prerequisite to build a functional society. We are optimistic that the people first approach will rule where the citizen will be at the center of our developmental strategy, where citizens will not be classified as only beneficiaries of law and services by primary actors to plan, implement and evaluate our developmental strategy and we will show that people matter to building a sustainable and inclusive Nigeria. She said Yali has commenced a two-week campaign to see that this sad incident of our dear greatness birth our desired Nigeria. Meanwhile, the Senate also on Thursday demanded a thorough investigation into the death of Mr. Lauren Femi. Also on Thursday, the FCTA inaugurated a nine-member panel to probe the incident.